What does the NYPD do now? What is involved in the investigation from this point forward? Well, the, you know, the fortunate thing about this is that we have the suspect alive. He's identified. We know where he lives or has been living. Uh, right now, NYPD investigators and Joint Terrorist Task Force people are spreading out all over Brooklyn looking to find out as much information about this individual as is possible. Of course, the first response was to mitigate the situation to pre preserve life. As I understand it now, there are four injuries to civilians and injury to the bomber. Uh, we have to find out when he came here, what his background is, who he's associated with, and what exactly he was trying to do. It sounds like it was some kind of pipe bomb, not a suicide vest, but we won't know that until the authorities tell us. But, you know, this is unfortunately the new normal in New York. Uh, yeah. We, we uh, have to see what... Go ahead. Yep, that's what we live with every day. I mean, I take the subway two, three times a day. Of course, was actually on it, as I said this morning. We bypassed Times Square on my way downtown. Um, was this in the subway? Is that your understanding? It's my understanding it was in the connecting corridor between subway tracks, where there were not a lot of people, fortunately. And apparently this device malfunctioned. And who knows, he was probably looking to go on a crowded subway train uh, to explode this device. Not much that, I mean, you know, the NYPD, uh, New York Fire Department, amazing, but not much you can do to protect these kinds of targets, uh, is there, Commissioner? You, you can't, especially in winter where people are wearing heavy clothing, unless you see somebody acting really weird. Uh, and then, of course, if you see something, you should say something. But you know, most people don't remember, but in 1999, when I was commissioner, the NYPD stopped three young Palestinian men with backpack bombs that were going on the subway, and we were very fortunate we got and stopped them. But you know, with the successes that we're having overseas, with ISIS calling for a worldwide jihad against America, uh, this unfortunately is something we have to be aware of and we're going to have to live with. Uh, Mr. Commissioner Jim Cramer, thank you so much for calling in. I'm always amazed, sir, how incredible the anti-terrorism squad is for the New York City police. It's almost as if they have uh, infiltrated where the guys are, where the bad guys are. They always seem to be one step ahead of the posse. Um, but you know what? I've become convinced that so often the people who do these things were investigated by the FBI and somehow they all got a pass or a huge number. Are, are the New York City police ever, and I know they work very close to the FBI, so I'm not asking for them to be out of school, but are they ever surprised that so many of the people that commit these uh, incidents were under investigation by the FBI and the FBI gave them a pass? Well, you know, unfortunately we live in a democracy where Unless somebody commits a crime, uh, if what you can do is surveil them. And if you think about the thousands of people who are radicalized in this country, uh, there's just not enough NYPD or FBI agents to keep them all in check. We've been very fortunate. But remember, uh, the terrorists only have to be once right. We have to be once. We have to be right 100 percent of the time. Yeah. So it, it is a daunting task. We'll have to find out what, what this guy's motivation is. Is it related to President Trump and his announcement about Jerusalem? Is it a ISIS-inspired individual, or is it just some nut? And, you know, that's all going to play out in the next day or so. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.